true. again. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you think? Uh, which of your new songs does your audience like best, and uh, which one receive the most positive feedback? I don't know. I mean, people li seem to like the new album, uh, so there's no really. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the first one we start the show with uh, "Ashes of the Dawn." People are pretty happy. Then we play. What else do we play? They like all the songs. Yeah, they do. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a wrong. It's it's kind of funny. It's kind of a wrong. It's a. It's it's not really a, something we can answer. It's more yeah. like a general audience poll. Yeah. To get the answer from. I like. I think I'm. I'm. I'm personally happy that the the edge of the world, which is like a long song. Uh, I wasn't sure. We were not sure at the beginning how the you know how the crowd would uh, react, and uh, usually they really get into it. Even though it's like it's different for what we usually do, so that that song has a good impact uh, in the crowd. But yeah, but they, they kind of like all the songs. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let me ask another question. Yes. Uh, which ones uh, do you like best? Uh, yeah, I, I like playing Edge of the World because it's different. It's uh, unusual for us. It's slower. It goes into different, you know, different vibes. You have that sort of death metal part in the middle, uh, which I like a lot. So uh, that would be. But I, I like to play them all because that being said, you play that song, you know, which is like long and uh, slow. But then I like to play Fury of the Storm, which is like you know, straight in your face and faster. But yeah, I'd, I'd say Edge of the World. Okay. Yeah, I think the set is designed that we don't get bored of any song or, yeah. or the audience don't get bored of anything. There's enough diversity and changes that you're not just playing 200 BPM every song. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> um, comparing, for example, uh, Ultra Beta to your new record, Reaching Into Infinity, mm -hmm. uh, it seems to me that your other works sound a little less dark. Um, uh, listening to Ultra Beta was more like listening to a, to a fairy tale and um, whilst your new album uh, feels more like listening to, to an adventure including this huge variety of styles. Um, on the one hand side there are uh, those fast power metal songs we already know mm -hmm. uh, very well mm -hmm. from you, but on the other hand side there are also uh, the slow song Silence, mm -hmm. the track War which has a touch of thrash metal mm -hmm. and so also harder uh, Evil Dead. Um, was it a kind of experiment you only did once in that way or is it the direction Dragon Force is going to evolve? I don't even know what we're going to do for the next album. I just we, we took it from uh, when we did Maximum Overload. You know, Sam's been writing most of the material for the first five albums, and then uh, he kind of like he ended up being like sort of oh, I don't really have that many ideas for Maximum Overload. So he came to my place and we uh, wrote everything together, and uh, and it worked because I don't particularly listen to power metal when I'm you know this is not my my favorite kind of metal. I, li I like it, but this is I, I, I'm more into thrash, death, prog, heavy, traditional heavy. So that's that's what I try to to bring in a in a, in a maximum overload. So it was like a bit between like some you know Dragon Force style and me being like taking somewhere else. So it wasn't in between. And for this one, because it worked, we wanted to do the same thing, but it just turned up that um, turned out that um, Sam had didn't have that many ideas. And I ended up writing uh, a seventy percent of the, the album, uh, eight songs out of eleven. So that's why it's different. Because mm -hmm. why it still sounds Dragon Force? Because everybody has the, like a strong personality when it comes to music. So it sounds like us, which is great. But uh, I had more room to experiment and uh, to to play, uh, uh, yeah, to play around with all these influences that were not uh, in in our music before. So I guess that's that's the reason why it sounds different. Okay. Yeah. Um, during the last few months, you have been uh, to many different places all over the globe. And uh, what is your touring life like? Is it really that classic image of uh, party all time and having fun, or is it more like um, the serious business all the time without uh, many chances to to party or to relax? I guess I just wrote on the board after party at the Sage Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for everybody to understand yeah, yeah. the schedule, I think we have we strike a good balance these days. Everybody between you know enjoying yourself, having fun, seeing your friends, and doing the professional part. So it's a good balance. It's not like we only do one thing or the other. Yeah. yeah. So we uh, um, that we manage to get it in the right amount these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It used That's to be like unbalanced. <laughs> it used to be like really party all the time. And, uh, Has it always been like that? No, well, yeah, like I said, before we used to like party way more, 
but I guess you know we're not getting any younger, so we still we still party hard. And uh, for for a power metal band, you know, we're far from that image of being like oh, oh you know nerdy and blah blah. We do we do party, but we know our limits as well, and we know when it's time to actually concentrate and deliver a good show. I think that's what's that's the main difference. Like before, we kind of didn't care. We're just like yeah, party time. And some shows did suffer from that because we were just like having fun. You know, for the sake of it. Yeah, but band is continuously evolving. Yeah, yeah. From making recordings, recording, you know, in the studio and also on stage. So we are always finding a way to improve what we do. Yeah. So if people thought we were good back then, live, or you know, now we're even better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, today you are playing a gig in Berlin, so I simply have to ask the question. Uh, have you ever made any special experience with Germany in the past, uh, perhaps during one of the last tours? We've been to Germany so many times it's hard to actually remember. Yeah. What, there is, uh, uh, what did you do on this trip in Germany that you thought you hadn't done before? Nothing. Something that I haven't done, that, no, nothing special. I just went out, had a beer in München or whatever. But uh, no, nothing that I haven't done. I've been, we've been, well. I guess sorry. I went, yeah, I went to the Porsche factory. Like, yeah, that's that was, something. That was really cool. You yeah. Know? Yeah, if you're into that kind of stuff, obviously. <laughs> yeah. It's a different kind of, you know, some people seen the war stuff, you know, back, back then and all this Checkpoint Charlie and all this stuff. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, history, no, history, nothing special. Well, my girlfriend came here from France, so mm -hmm. uh, uh, she's here today. So tomorrow we're gonna walk around a little. But, uh, so that's that's something that doesn't happen all the time while on tour. But apart from that, no. I mean, I, like I was saying before the interview, I lived in Germany as well, so I'm, I'm uh, I know my I know my Germany pretty well. Okay, <laughs> yeah. um, what do you think is more fun? Playing live music in concert halls or stadiums in front of your die-hard fans who uh, know all or almost most of your songs, or uh, playing at an open air festival where there is this specific uh, festival feeling in the air and where you have the chance to play in front of an audience who uh, you are probably absolutely uh, new to. There are different things. Yeah. Get different. No, I mean. It's cool playing to the people that know your music, but it's, it's no point preaching the converted all the time. Mm -hmm. You gotta play to people that don't know the music and go, oh wow, I haven't heard stuff like that, or wow, I didn't know this band. I mean, with this, to this day, there's still people that say, oh, I never heard of Dragon Force. Have you guys got, how many albums you guys got? I think, well, we've been around for a long time. We've toured the world, you know, some of the biggest bands. And so, um, you know, there's always people new getting into rock music and heavy metal. So we're happy to show them what we do. We played a festival uh, earlier this year. Was it in Maine? The 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 it was uh, divided in two. One side was like over twenty one, so they could drink, and the other one was under twenty one, so there was younger. And Falling in Reverse was supposed to play on that stage, so for the young audience, which makes sense. And we were supposed to play with like people that drink. And for some reason, it just got switched around, so we were playing in front of. Young audience and the the drinking ones, so we were just looking at the drinking ones, and we got the young one as well. So that was like more of a challenge than play to like, you know, party music. But it, that was interesting, in a, in a in a sense. So um, yeah, it, it's good to play uh, to play in front of someone on on, on a, in front of an audience that doesn't really know your music or not that well. But uh, I suppose yeah, it, it, it's. It's cool to just like like for tonight, for example. I imagine just like play and everybody sings the song and it makes you feel better, you know. But it's uh, it's it's also good to go there and just like all right, fuck, we really need to you know to give it 110 percent because you know we need to show them what we what we do. Uh, Herman, uh, a question to you: You started comparatively late to play the guitar. Um, today you are the idol of many musicians all over the world. Do you think it was a disadvantage to start learning to play the guitar that late? And do you think it is ever too late to learning uh, to learn to play an instrument if you want to become very good? If you want to become, for example, a guitar hero? I don't think it, it matter when you start as long as you have a passion and want to do it. If you're gonna start three years old, but you don't care about it in the first few years because you haven't discovered the music you want to play, you know this obviously makes it a bit different. But I mean, it's obviously there's an advantage if you start earlier, for sure. And you know, so many different kind of music, different kind of music. Even though you probably don't like it at the beginning, 
you might discover it later or you might realize that it helps you at the beginning so a lot of the players in in the band like Fred Sam you know they've started you know being classically trained musicians at an early age obviously that give them a different perspective of the music and understanding and different way that I would learn it you know later on in a, you know mainly as a kind of a rock guitar player yeah okay, um, and now a question to you <laughs> um, besides Dragon Force you've got another band project going on which is Insanum yes um, like I said before and like you said before uh, you're currently on world tour with Dragon Force which yes. is uh, in fact a full-time job um, how do you still find the time to make music in another band how does it work uh, well, I just go back home and switch from uh, one to another, or while I'm on tour, I actually work on Sinsanum. Actually, in fact, I've been doing that, not not these last few days, because I had to recover from uh, partying too much, but uh, I, uh, I'm i working on the next album. We have an EP coming out. You know, it's just like when we have, because we, we're not constantly on the road with Dragon Force, so it's just like, for example, we stopped end of July, or August and uh, September. I spent a lot of time working on Sinsane, and then I'm back here, then I'm, when I'm back home, we'll have vacation for a little while. But uh, yeah, the EP is coming out in two weeks, and then uh, we're working on the... I wrote most of the songs for the next album, actually, pretty much everything's done, and then it's going to come out next September. And before that, we might do some stuff with Dragon Force. And uh, I mean, it's, it's not that impossible, but you need to be like well organized and uh, you need to have like a, yeah, a girlfriend that uh, is very understanding <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah okay, um, a question for you too again uh, what kind of music do you like listening to in your free time and do you have any favorite band or artist since wave <laughs> we were listening to electronic music last night um, yeah yeah I, I don't I don't listen to too much metal these days I used to when I was a kid it was just like metal 100% 24-7 all the time uh, now that this is part of our job or life that we you know there's always metal around us when I go home yeah I tend to listen to yeah a bit of everything I do I do put on some I don't know Pantera every now and then but I'm more I'm more gonna listen to uh, yeah the 80s classical you know classic um, uh, not classic uh, like disco music 80s stuff or AOR, uh, uh, you know, yeah, classical music as well, f jazz, jazz fusion, bit of everything really. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, yeah, I listen to a lot of AOR, hard rock and stuff. <laughs> obviously, I still listen to metal, but you know, there's so much great music out there. It's a shame to only listen to one style and yeah. you only learn one thing. You know, if you only listen to one style of music, especially as a guitar player, you just end up sounding it like everybody else. That's just, you know, one style. So Dragon Force um, have an originality and sound of our own because we listen to more than one style of music and throughout you know listening and playing music for so many years we're able to get a lot of um, ideas from different styles of music. Um, today you are supported by Twilight Force. Um, what do you think about these guys, about their music and about their look? <laughs> I think it's cool they're passionate about what they're doing and they're doing their thing mm -hmm. that they like and that's what that's important it's, um, it's a it's a hard it's hard these days for any metal band to make it out you know be on tour and all that and they're they're, they're cool guys so um, good for them I think it's um, they have their thing their you know their image and the thing and they're really sticking to it so it's, they're fun fun bunch of guys it's cool yeah um, now I come to my last uh, question that I used to ask uh, every artist I make an interview with. Mm -hmm. um, imagine there were a metal fairy show showing up right next to you. Um, who could make one band or artist uh, of your choice go on tour with you, no matter uh, whether the band still exists or not, or if the artist is still alive or not, if it is a famous band or a not so well known. If you had the free choice, who would it be and why? We've got Twilight Force, all we want it. <laughs> Yeah. So we got it. It's actually true. <laughs> we wanted to take them on the tour, and we did. Yeah. I think different time of your life and different part of your, you know, different tour, you want to take different bands. So you can't say one for everything, I would say. You know? yeah. <laughs> Trying to think, I don't know. I mean, it have to be a band that I would have to watch every night and I might, be, might yeah. end up being bored of it. So maybe not a band that I like. I don't know. I'd like to uh, say, uh, for, I don't know, uh, say the... Uh, Iron Maiden from uh, the No Prayer for the Dying tour. 
because I like this album and I didn't have the chance to watch them live around them, so I could see that every night <laughs> and listen to no, the song No Prayer for Dying every night. So that, but that's it. Could have been Morbid Angel, could have been Pessence. Yeah, but that, that's my answer. Iron Maiden in 1990. Yeah. Okay. Um, then uh, thanks for taking uh, the time to answer my questions. Okay. As you're in the focus of this talk, um, you have the final say. Uh, is there a message you would like to tell the people watching? Okay, if you want to hear what we got to say, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> They're all right there. Yeah. Switch it to our channels. Yeah. Because unfortunately, we've taken the power away from all the stuff with social media. Mm -hmm. It's almost irrelevant now, that question. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm giving the same answer to everybody that asked me that question. <laughs> <laughs> What's your final say? Go to uh, our social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to our official website, dragonforce.com. Listen to the album, buy the album, listen to it on Spotify, Deezer. I don't care. You don't want Spotify. You want Spotify a little, if they like Spotify. I've been told it's cool to be on Spotify. So Is it? Listen to, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've actually yeah, had a got, conversation got, with we the got one cent for a million down. Um, but, but then we need a hundred thousand million. So <laughs> help us <laughs> get 10, 10 euros on uh, Spotify. Uh, thanks for watching us, even though the camera is weird and makes a big nose. And uh, see you soon on the road somewhere. <laughs> Bye. Hail Satan. Satan. <laughs>